Arthur Ashe 1943-1993, Arthur Ashe was the first African-American to win the men's singles titles at Wimbledon and the U.S. Open, and the first African-American man to be ranked number one in the world. Who was Arthur Ashe? Arthur Ashe became the first, and remains the only, African-American male tennis player to win the U.S. Open and Wimbledon singles titles. He was also the first African-American man to earn the number one ranking in the world and the first to earn induction into the Tennis Hall of Fame. Always an activist, when Ash learned that he had contracted AIDS via a blood transfusion, he turned his efforts to raising awareness about the disease, before finally succumbing to it on February 6, 1993. Early Life Arthur Robert Ash Jr. was born on July 10, 1943, in Richmond, Virginia. The older of Arthur Ash Sr. and Maddie Cunningham's two sons, Arthur Ash Jr. blended finesse and power to forge a groundbreaking tennis game. Ash's childhood was marked by hardship and opportunity. Under his mother's direction, Ash was reading by the age of four. But his life was turned upside down two years later, when Maddie passed away. Ash's father, fearful of seeing his boys fall into trouble without their mother's discipline, began running a tighter ship at home. Ash and his younger brother, Johnny, went to church every Sunday, and after school they were required to come straight home, with Arthur Sr. closely watching the time, my father, kept me home, out of trouble. I had exactly 12 minutes to get home from school, and I kept to that rule through high school. Early Tennis Career About a year after his mother's death, Ash discovered the game of tennis, picking up a racket for the first time at the age of seven at a park not far from his home. Sticking with the game, Ash eventually caught the attention of Dr. Robert Walter Johnson Jr., a tennis coach from Lynchburg, Virginia, who was active in the black tennis community. Under Johnson's direction, Ash excelled. In his first tournament, Ash reached the Junior National Championships. Driven to excel, he eventually moved to St. Louis to work closely with another coach, winning the Junior National title in 1960 and again in 1961. Ranked the fifth best junior player in the country, Ash accepted a scholarship to the University of California, Los Angeles, where he graduated with a degree in business administration. Winning the U.S. Open title in 1968 In 1963 Ash became the first African American to be recruited by the U.S. Davis Cup team. He continued to refine his game, gaining the attention of his tennis idol, Pancho Gonzalez, who further helped Ash hone his serve and volley attack. The training all came together in 1968, when the still amateur Ash shocked the world by capturing the U.S. Open title, becoming the first, and still the only, African-American male player to do so. Two years later, he took home the Australian title. Winning Wimbledon, becoming number one tennis player in 1975. In 1975 Ash registered another upset by beating Jimmy Connors in the Wimbledon finals, marking another pioneering achievement within the African-American community, becoming the first African-American male player to win Wimbledon, which, like his U.S. Open victory, remains unmatched. That same year, Ash became the first African-American man to be ranked number one in the world. Ten years later, in 1985, he would become the first African-American man to be inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Political Activism Ash didn't relish his status as the sole black star in a game dominated by white players, but he didn't run away from it, either. With his unique pulpit, he pushed to create inner-city tennis programs for youth, helped found the Association of Men's Tennis Professionals and spoke out against apartheid in South Africa, even going so far as to successfully lobby for a visa so he could visit and play tennis there. The tennis great also wrote a history of African-American athletes, A Hard Road to Glory, three volumes, published in 1988, and served as national campaign chairman of the American Heart Association. Health Problems and AIDS Diagnosis Ash, who retired from competition in 1980, was plagued with health issues over the last 14 years of his life. After undergoing a quadruple bypass operation in 1979, he had a second bypass operation in 1983. In 1988 he underwent emergency brain surgery after experiencing paralysis of his right arm. A biopsy taken during a hospital stay revealed that Ash had AIDS. Doctors soon discovered that Ash had contracted HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, from a transfusion of blood that he was given during his second heart operation. Initially, 
he kept the news hidden from the public. But in 1992, Ash came forward with the news after he learned that USA Today was working on a story about his health battle. After news of his condition became public, Ash poured himself into the work of raising awareness about AIDS. He delivered a speech at the United Nations, started a new foundation and laid the groundwork for a $5 million fundraising campaign for the institution. Ash continued to work, even as his health began to deteriorate, traveling to Washington, D.C., in late 1992 to participate in a protest over the United States' treatment of Haitian refugees. For his part in the demonstration, Ash was taken away in handcuffs. It was a poignant final display for a man who was never shy about showing his concern for the welfare of others. Personal life. Ash met acclaimed photographer Jean Mutusami at a United Negro College Fund benefit in 1976 and married her a year later. Andrew Young, the ambassador to the United Nations, presided over the wedding. The couple remained together until Ash's death. In 1986 Ash and Mutusami adopted a girl named Camera, after the latter's line of work. Death Ash died in New York City on February 6, 1993 from AIDS-related pneumonia. Four days later, he was laid to rest in his hometown of Richmond, Virginia. Some 6,000 people attended the service. Legacy In addition to his pioneering tennis career, Ash is remembered as an inspirational figure. He once said, True heroism is remarkably sober, very undramatic. It is not the urge to surpass all others at whatever cost, but the urge to serve others at whatever cost. He also offered words about achieving success. One important key to success is self-confidence. An important key to self-confidence is preparation.